So tonight we're talking about <clears throat> visualizing. Ah, this is Edward Nan, sonsofgod.com. So, <clears throat> at the heart of so many things that have to happen is our ability to see it and visualize it. Uh, more than we know, it is the avenue through which we create. Uh, the people of the world realize that uh, far more than uh, God's people, that there is a principle involved in being able to create what you desire. Um, of course, they're not doing it after what God is looking for, but after what their own wishes may be. But nevertheless, we, we don't understand the power of the mind. Now, Lord, we ask your blessing, impartation, and maybe a little explosion as well. The power of the mind is really very hidden. We, you know, we can conceptualize, we can read scientific treatises that talk about how little we use of the mind and what the mind is capable of. But by and large, the human race does not know. Every once in a while, someone will break into something and, uh, and, and do some amazing things. And if you think about it for a minute, what's happening when that happens? There are documented times when people have accessed more of their mind, whatever, and been able to achieve great feats. Uh, that would even be relegated to, let's say, I, I, I don't recall the exact stories, there's been many of them, but let's say there's an auto accident and your, your daughter or your son or something is pinned beneath a car. And they've documented how the mother will come up and literally lift that car off the child. And so driven and something just snapped uh, in them. And they did it. And you say, how, how is that possible? How did they achieve that? It's because somewhere, something clicked and they broke out of the restraints of humanity. And they tapped into the innate ability that God has put within man that literally could do anything. You remember the story about the Tower of Babel. There was quite a problem for the Lord at that time. These were evil beings that were on the earth. And they were, according to the story, building a tower that would reach, you know, whatever. Now, that's probably symbolic because building a tower in the sky is one thing. Building an axis in the realm of spirit uh, is another but they found that through their agreement, they were harnessing something of a power or ability within them that they literally could do anything. And the Lord saw that and knew what was happening and realized, okay, this is not going to happen. And he put confusion you know, and as the, as the story goes, uh, uh, they began to literally not be able to communicate nor understand one another. But the fact remains that until that time, they had found a way of accessing something within the mind and through their agreement where they could do anything. Now, this is thousands of years in the future since then. But it hasn't really changed. There is an innate ability hidden to man, blocked, I'm sure, by the Holy Spirit, 
um, that does not allow that level uh, to really be achieved. Yet, we face a challenge. Because to the sons of God, to accomplish what you've been sent to do necessitates that you break through the restraints and limitations that have been in place for thousands of years and you achieve what has been hitherto unachievable. Now, how does that come about? Well, it comes about through the mind of Christ. Really, you just can't say, okay, you know what? I'm a Christian and and uh, and God says I'm unlimited, so I'm I'm just going to go do this. Um, it's, it's not going to work too easy for you. But as the, the cross goes deeper and deeper, and the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ becomes your mind, and you lay aside the weights and the sins and and the complications and the difficulties and your paradigm which says, I can't do this, I can't do this, I'm limited, I'm blah, blah, blah. But as you begin to let go of that false reality, it is replaced with a new paradigm, the paradigm of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is within you and within me, just as the Father and the Holy Spirit are within us. Now that changes things a little bit because for many years now, 10, 15, 20, the Lord has said, let go, let go. And he looks at you again, he says, gosh, you're not hearing me. Let go. Read my lips. Well, Lord, I can't see your lips. Well, whatever. (laughs) But read my lips, let go so that I can then do what? I can tell you what is real and what is not. I can redefine your reality. And the more that happens to you, the more God removes you from this present age, the more God begins to deliver the Babylon out of you. Like we've said, it's one thing to, you know, step out of the world, it's another to get the world out of you. And this is the process of, being delivered, you know, out of the world within you. It's your thinking. It's your mindset. It's your paradigm. And so the Lord has said a number of times, it's right here, you just don't see it. You've got it, but you don't see it. And he said one time, several years ago, he says, manifest sonship. And he was pretty determined when he said that. It was like cutting to the chase. Manifest it. Darn it, manifest sonship. And I'm like, okay, is there anything that you want to fill in on that, Lord? Any detail? And so, the manifestation of the sons of God is tied in directly to the renewing of the mind within you and within I. Is it going to take forever? Is it supposed to take a long time? No, it's taken long enough. And like I've said before, this path you and I are on isn't going to get us to the goal. It isn't. We're on the right path, but I can tell you it's going to take a lot longer than you're going to be living. At some point, you've got to cut it to the chase. In the book of Malachi, it says the Lord suddenly comes to his temple. Suddenly comes to his temple. What does that mean? That means he suddenly comes. He possesses you. And you possess him. And there's an interpenetration of God and man. And you are one. We are there. We have been there. We have been experiencing this. This is a current reality. Even though the world has no clue, this level of penetration of God and man is happening. God is suddenly coming to his temple. And there is a transition on. 
And there is a changing of the mind. It just hasn't been happening quick enough. And yet with it, the Lord has brought decree after decree. All right, let go. Let go. You're still holding on to unbelief. You're still holding on to a paradigm of reality that is not true. You're living in a world of illusion. Yes, I get that. I get that. I mean, you're really living in a realm of illusion. Now, maybe I don't get it. Because you've ascribed to everything that your eyes see and the mind of the flesh then interprets. Because that's how you have evolved to this point. And the mind then says, okay, that is real. And so it's a lot more than just the mind looking and saying, okay, that's real. It's a lot more because it involves every part of your being that responds to it, that literally creates it as a reality. I mean, we're talking deep waters here to even really understand what the process is of how reality is even created. You can think, well, reality is reality. It's just here. No, I don't think so. I think what we are as human beings creates a reality that we then see from a certain perspective. If you saw it different, would it make it any different? It certainly would. Because you would then, your reality, your paradigm, would create a whole different scenario. That's why the word says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you think you're limited, you are. If you don't think you can hear the voice of God, you can't. But the Lord has said, I can hear. Yes, you can. But no, you can't. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Are you limited and bound? If that's how you see yourself, then you are. And yet God has said, I have set you free. For freedom's sake, I have set you free. Uh Lord, I don't feel free. And you're not then. Because you don't see it as I see it. You don't see yourself as I see you. I know the truth. I know the reality. Well, Lord, let's talk about that. I would like to know the truth. Well, the truth is not going to be this concept and this concept. It's going to be me. You know me. I am the truth. Then you will know the truth. And the truth is I have set you free. Now, now we have another problem. I have sent you into the earth this last time to fulfill a destiny so great that angels can't even understand it. I have sent you to become the sons of God, to become literally a new creation. That is your destiny. What is a new creation? A new creation is outside the present creation. We see creation in a certain limelight. We see people and horses and trees and plants and just everything. That's, that's a aspect of creation. But the Lord has said, Behold, I'm going to do something new and it's going to be in you and it's going to be a whole new thing and it's going to be called the sons of the living God. That's what you are. But you don't see it yet because your mind is still stuck going around a track like we said in book one of our four books of the word tracks of consciousness. Look it up and read it. Really, look it up and read it. Tracks of consciousness. Because that's what you're having to break out of. Break out of the roots and the routines that are carved deep within your consciousness that are part of your mind. 
And so you're, you're, you're in the process of breaking out of these deep roots that are in the road. It's like a wagon that goes over a dirt road many times. After a while, you have these deep ruts. And that's what we're dealing with. Deep ruts within our thinking. Deep ruts within our consciousness that don't let us step out. Because we have been so locked into seeing things a certain way. So we're talking about visualizing. I think we haven't got there yet, have we? But visualizing. Several times now in the last two, three years, the Lord has come and said, okay, you've already got resurrection life. You already have it. It is resonating within you. You're walking around and you've got this resurrection vibe happening and you don't know it. But resurrection is, is a frequency it really is. It's a frequency. Just like the Lord is a frequency. You know, everything is frequency. And it's in you. You have resurrection life. Now, Lord, we, I, I, I believe that. But I haven't been able to manifest it yet. So the next step... I want you to visualize. See yourself on the other side of this change. See yourself there. Picture yourself. And in in the world, you know, they they call that visualizing, and they add another element to it. They say, visualize with emotion, with intensity, because that adds even more of a substantive reality. Well, if the you know, if the the children of this world know these things, how much more should we know and do them after the Spirit? And so we were reading through some visions and things the other day, and the Lord spoke very clearly. This is how you're going to visualize. How often have we gone to wait on the Lord? And you probably as well. And we're, we're there quieting, quieting ourselves and just looking to the Lord. And the mind works by visualizing. You know, it doesn't have a choice. It just does that. Someone talks to you, you're automatically forming, uh, you know, something in your mind of what it is. Just like when someone talks... You're automatically forming an opinion, but the mind get it just it just functions that way. So you either visualize, you can visualize like the word says, positive or negative. You can visualize lack or abundance. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he, or a woman. And the Lord said, "See yourself on the other side of this change." And it's very easy to forget. And so you, you're back in, you're in that room and you're just waiting on God and you're thinking to yourself, well, okay, what am I going to visualize? And you start coming up with some stuff and you're kind of working on how to visualize um, or what you're trying to visualize. Um, and it became very clear. You don't have to try to work anything up. Visualize my word. Visualize the dreams and the visions I've given you. Rehearse them. Isn't that the key? The key to success was it Joshua. He meditated on the word day and night, and therein was his victory, was his strength, was his secret. And so we go into the word. And and that's why the books were written, the four books. I don't, you know, I don't know if you read them and reread them and listen to them. That's why we put them on audio, to listen to them and and let it saturate and go deep and let the mind continue to visualize their reality. 
That's why the audio books were done. Not just to have something to go to sleep to, <laughs> but something that helps you to see it and picture it. And as you're listening, your mind is visualizing and you're picturing the reality of it. And you do that over and over. And that's and when the Lord brings a vision or an appearing and you write it down, it can be very easy to write it all down and put it in a book and say, okay, that was great. Now I'm ready for another one. And lose sight of the fact that the purpose of what he, why he gave that to you was that you would rehearse it over and over again and visualize it. You know, the word says God's remembrancers. Well, it's very similar. They overlap very close. When you're reminding of the Lord, Lord, you spoke this and you spoke this, but you're doing it not from a mental state of, uh, of just reading a word. You're seeing it. And you're reminding him, Lord, you spoke this, you spoke this. I see it, I see it. And you keep working at visualizing. And, and this is really a key right now for us to see happen what needs to happen. In fact, when the fourth book was done, Into the Light, the Lord brought a word which we we spoke of some time back and I came across it and he said the first books were given I'm paraphrasing I don't have it in front of me the first books were given to um, impart a a deeper awareness uh, trying to remember how it all went Uh, but he said the last book is magic because it will propel you into a realm you haven't walked in before and you'll begin to experience that. I'll have to find it and read it uh, maybe on the next uh, um, word. But the, the books are very, very important. The words that the Lord has spoken, very, very important that we rehearse them, we remind him and we rehearse these words, and we see them, and we visualize them. That's what we have to do right now. How are we going to get from point A to point B? I don't know. But I know that we have to get there. This is the time. What is happening in the earth is one huge distraction, or can be, because We're in the time of the end. We're in the time of judgment. We're in the time of the purification of the earth. What's going on in Europe? I have no sympathy for anybody. It's the judgments of God that are falling and the purification of the earth. And the word has come many times. Millions upon millions are going to perish And people will run to hide themselves under the rocks because of the manifesting of the presence of God that comes. And you say, well, but God is love. Why would he kill millions of people? Well, you'll have to ask him. But he's purging and purifying the earth and the children of the earth. There's so much evil. Europe is so evil, so evil. I mean, so evil. And we, we, we're only at the beginning. We're only at the beginning of what's going to unfold. And the word was that once it begins, it's going to unfold rapidly. And I think that's ha- it's going to begin to happen now. It's going to move much more rapidly. The COVID-19 is just one aspect of it. There's more coming, a lot more coming. We have to fulfill our destiny. We have to fulfill why God sent us to break through, to bring in the kingdom, to experience the change and become a new creation before God. 
something that Joel references that has never been done on the earth before and never will for years to follow. That God brings forth something new. And the admonition, Behold, I will do something new. Will you be aware? Will you be aware? Or will you be caught up with all the distractions of the judgments that are falling now upon the satanic hordes? These events playing out have nothing to do with these these corrupt leaders of nations. They're all so corrupt. But this is a judgment upon a world of spirit, of evil, that has been in place for a very long time. And it's time now. God is going to bring it all down and has begun. Has begun. The U.S. government is such a corrupt institution. It's ridiculous. All of it. Republicans, Democrats, whatever they want to call themselves, they're all corrupt. There might be one or two here or there, but this is where we are. And the problem is, it's time now to finish the transition. It's time now to become and to manifest. The cloud of witnesses have been coming around more recently because they know it's the time for our transition because our transition will be their breakthrough. And it will be a breakthrough that will affect the earth and the heavens on a level that we've never known, never seen. Well, this is the word for the evening. The Lord bless you and strengthen you and give you eyesight and clarity to see through the smoke and screen, or screen and smoke or whatever it is, and to see the truth, to see him. Anna and I send our blessings. Amen.